I'm sorry, I, I didn't realize you were there. I, I, I didn't mean to be so impolite as to uh, be playing my whistle when you, uh, you came into my house. Uh, it's time for a, a story about the Magic Mouse. As you recall, Magic Mouse moved into the treehouse in Mother Amal's garden, where the children had graciously invited it to live, Mouse being so small, so was never to be seen, and no one could tell if Mouse were a boy or a girl. And Mouse said it made no difference. And on this day, the children wanted to have a party, a special party, to celebrate the arrival of Magic Mouse. But Mother Amal said no. Mother Amal said, it's too late, have your party tomorrow. But it's not every day a Magic Mouse comes to live in our house. C -c Can we have our party now, this very instant? But Mother Amal was adamant, she was firm, she would not give in, she said no until Magic Mouse said, what if I, Magic Mouse, could get time to stop? And if I were to get time to stop, then all of the clocks in Angelville would stop, and no one would have to go to bed until they were tired, rather than because the clock said they must. Don't be silly, said Mother Amal. You cannot stop time. No one has ever stopped time. We've kept time by the quarters of the moon, the booming of the flowers, the coming of the birds, but you cannot stop time. I believe I can, said Magic Mouse. And at that very second, that very instant, Father Time came, shrugging up to the garden gate. Excuse me, Mouse, open the gate. I'm in a hurry. I must be on my way. I'm sorry, said Magic Mouse. But we cannot give you passage nor right of way this day unless you, dear Father Time, agree to stop and rest and stay. Mm, don't be silly. Time cannot stop. Time must move on and on and on and on and on. Time cannot stop. It must move on. It must move on. It must move on and on and on and on. There's a wake up time and breakfast time and school time and, 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 and work time and come home from school and come home from work and dinner time and bath time. Time for this and time for that and time for this and time for that. Cannot stop. I must move on. I must move on. I can teach you. You, you, you can teach me? Will, will, will it take much time? I, I, I don't have much time. And the children all giggled. Time doesn't have much time. Time doesn't have much time. How silly can time be? How, how, how do I stop, Mouse? How do I stop? Simply stop. And Father Time stopped. And immediately he touched the chair. He closed his eyes and fell asleep. 
and the time stop party began. And the fuzzy stroke is marching make-believe earth band came in playing the most beautiful music. And then suddenly, there, there was, uh, the children rushed over to Mouse and said, Mouse, would you teach us a game? And Mouse said, when you rushed about before to tell the world I was here, what did you do? Well, we shouted and we said, Magic Mouse is here. No need to shout, said Mouse, for a truth whispered will carry on the wind until the whole world hears it. And besides, did you know that when you whispered, you had to smile? Yeah, I defy you, Gordon. Try, try, try to whisper without a smile. You cannot do it. So if you have a smile and a whisper, people will say, come closer, come closer. What did you say? But when you shout, they say, go away, go away. Well, the children love that game. And they said, Mouse, have you another game to teach us? And Mouse said, of course. Have any of you ever been angry? Have you been angry? Have you been angry? Any of you? Well, they all raised their hand. And Mouse said, well, the next time you're angry, simply go into the garden and sit in silence for one hour with one flower and all your anger will lose its power. Well, the flowers didn't want all the anger. They said, sit in silence for an hour with the tree and your anger will be free. And the tree said, sit in silence for an hour with the grape and your anger will lose its shape. And the grape said, sit in silence for an hour with a friend and your anger will surely end. When young Albertina Cuddlewick, the youngest of Mother Amal's children came in and said, sit in silence for an hour with an ant, I'll bet you can't. And they all giggled and the children started to go to sleep because they were tired, not because the clock said they must. And when the last of the children were tucked in their bed, Magic Mouse went over to Father Time and said, Time, it's time to get up. And Father Time opened his eyes and felt rested for the first time ever. And he looked at Magic Mouse and said, Thank you, dear Mouse, for teaching me that time is only the product of my anxious mind. And that's our story for today. These are places in the world. Some you know, some you don't. Some you'll visit, and some you won't. Some are near, and some are far. Some sound exotic like Zanzibar. Cause these are places in the world. Bombay, Cape May, Mandalay, Baffin Bay, Baghdad, Leningrad, Ashgabat, Trinidad, LA, Norway, Paraguay, Monterey, Singapore, Ecuador, Bangalore, Baltimore. These are places in the world. PG, Sicily, Nagasaki, Tennessee, Cairo, Quito, Borneo, Idaho, Taiwan, Dijon, Saigon, Tehran, Guatemala, Oklahoma, Argentina, North Dakota. These are places in the world. Some are new and some are old. Some are hot and some are cold. Some are low and some are high. Some are wet and some are dry. Cause these are places in the world. Glasgow, Oslo, Fresno, Tsingtayo, Falkland, Auckland, Yucatan, Disneyland, Libya, Namibia, Romania, Pennsylvania, Bora Bora, Walla Walla, Costa Rica, Bratislava, these are places in the world. Krakow, Chongqing, Moscow, Tokelau, Dominique, Pikes Peak, Mozambique, Bitter Creek, Warsaw, Moose Jaw, Saskatoon, Cameroon, Haifa, Mecca, Bethlehem, Jerusalem, these are places in the world. High on a mountain, down on the plain, Deep in the jungle, in the middle of the rain. Children laugh and children play. Everywhere, every day. Cause these are places in the world. Hi, and welcome to Silicon Kids. I'm Liz. I'm Eric. I'm Deborah. I'm Grace. I'm Melanie. I'm Yanni. On today's show, Deborah and Annie go to Great America to interview Doug Streepy, a dolphin and sea lion trainer. They also get to meet one of the dolphins and see the show. Hope you enjoy our show. Hi, I'm Deborah with Annie from Silicon Kids, here today at Great America in Santa Clara. Here with us today is Doug Streepy, the head dolphin trainer. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm um, really good today. How about yourself? Fine. Okay, how can you tell the difference between the two dolphins? The two dolphins we have right here, well, the female, Liana, she has sort of a white bleached area on her rostrum. That's how I know her from Squeaky, who has sort of a scar on one side of his body. And that's how I tell the two apart. 
How long does it take to train a dolphin or a sea lion? Uh, it takes approximately six to 12 months, almost a year for a lot of the behaviors that we're doing. Well, did you go to school for this job? I, yes, yes, I did. I sure did. I, first of all, got a four-year degree in zoology, a Bachelor of Arts degree in zoology. And after that, I began working for this company, and I've been doing it for the past past three years. Three years. Um, where did you get the dolphins and the sea, sea lions? Uh, the dolphins were captured most likely out in the Gulf of Mexico near the Mississippi Sound. Uh, my company captures a lot of dolphins. Uh, the sea lions were obtained from this area, actually from California. We look for stranded animals and we buy stranded sea lions, usually small sea lions, not pups actually, but they're probably two or three years old. How did you get interested in training dolphins? Well, about the second year of college, my sophomore year, I uh, was trying to figure out exactly what I'd like to do with my degree. And I thought working with marine mammals would really be very interesting. So what I did was I started checking around with uh, different different companies such as SeaWorld for one and my company which is known as Marine Animal Productions. Uh, what I finally ended up doing is I went down there and interviewed with the company uh, during during vacation time. Uh, this was the year before I was going to graduate actually. I uh, went down there interviewed with them and they uh, offered me a full-time job for the summer. So what happened was I, I went down there, worked for the summer. This is in Gulfport, Mississippi. Uh, I'm from Toledo, Ohio originally by the way. And anyway I went back to Ohio after that but before I came back uh, to finish up my degree in Ohio, they offered me a full-time position after I graduated. So that's how I got into the business. How old are the two dolphins and the sea lions? Uh, the two dolphins are approximately, I, I don't have an exact on this, but they're about 12, 13 years old. Uh, the sea lions are approximately, well, let's see, Jeff, the oldest of the two, he is almost 11 years old. Uh, this, the other sea lion, Ryder, is definitely younger and he is about eight, seven or eight years old. Did you train these dolphins and sea lions all by yourself? Um, <laughs> no, not actually. No, the two that are that are here, Liana and Squeaky, were actually trained at first by other trainers. Uh, they've gone down the line through a lot of different trainers, actually. Um, some of the behaviors before they got here were already trained at in Gulfport, and then when they were flown out here, uh, the girl. Uh, who was here before I was, uh, she worked on some new behaviors with them, and then I've also worked on and finished up some other behaviors that uh, she was working on. Does it ever get bored doing the same thing over and over again? Uh, yeah, it does. It does, to be really honest. But what we do is we try to change up our shows. What we do is we mix up the behaviors a little bit. The animals also get bored besides ourselves. So what we do is we try to uh, mix up the behaviors a little bit. Um, uh, I can take out some behaviors that the dolphins do and add others and then switch them up, uh, switch up the order of the behaviors during the show. Uh, that keeps everybody pretty much wide awake and we also kind of think of new things to do on stage, my assistant and I also. So. When did you start training the two dolphins? I, start, I came here approximately, uh, well in February actually, so that's when I started working with these two. Uh, so that's, that gives you a time frame as far as when I came here. Uh, I've worked on, on some new behaviors since then, like I say, with the sea lions and the dolphins. But I haven't had a lot of time to work on a lot of behaviors, mainly because we had shows starting back in May, so I really didn't have a lot of training time. Are you planning to have a baby dolphin? <laughs> uh, no. As far as we know, neither the female Liana is not pregnant at the moment. Uh, blood tests have been taken to make sure she wasn't, and she isn't at the moment. So future you never know what do they do after each shows after the shows well these two primarily uh, liana stays out in the main stadium pool here and just kind of wanders around looks at the people that are or the ushers and so forth that are still hanging around um and she'll play we can throw water back and forth with her uh, she likes having water poured down her throat which uh, also squeaky does uh, squeaky on the other hand <laughs> pretty much just uh snoozes over on the side he kind of sleeps for the rest of the show or excuse me sleeps until the next show and it sleeps between shows where do the dolphins and the sea lion go when great america is closed Oh, when Great America is closed, uh, the dolphins and sea lions stay here because the the reason the temperature stays fairly warm here year-round, so we can keep our dolphins here year-round. Um, they stay here, and we work on new behaviors. I work on training new behaviors for the next season, like I say, to try and break up that boredom that we talked about, you know, during shows. What kind of fish do the dolphins and sea lions eat? Uh, the dolphins eat herring and capelin. That's what we're feeding them now. Uh, they also have 
their diet also can, can consist of uh, mackerel and smelt, which are another a couple other types that we use. But here it's herring and capelin. The herring are, well, fairly big, and they're also a fatty type fish. The capelin are considered a real lean fish, um, so we kind of mix it up. We don't want to get a, give the dolphins all fatty fish all day, or they will get really, well, they'll feel very full, and they won't want to work near the end of the day. Uh, so we kind of vary up their diet a little bit. They get approximately per show, uh, half a pound of herring and about one and a half pounds of capelin. Now they do five shows a day, so for four of the shows they get that type of diet. Then at the end we kind of increase it, both the herring and the capelin, for a final feed up of the day. Um, and that's, that's primarily what they get for the shows. As far as the dolphins for their diet, they get approximately 13 to 14 pounds of fish per day. Uh, we can usually increase that if the dolphins are still working well at that pound rate. Uh, also, the sea lions get about 11 or 12 pounds a day. What do you do when the dolphin or sea lion does something wrong? They don't do their like trick right oh, or okay. something? Okay. Um, there's a couple of things. Well, actually, the main thing that we usually do, and we even use it during the show, it's called a timeout. And what you do is, uh, during a training session, when a dolphin misbehaves or something, we just take the bucket and the trainer themselves, and you leave. You disappear from the dolphin's sight. And uh, what the dolphin really notices is not that the trainer's gone, but the fish bucket just took off. And that's what they're mainly concerned about. Um, they do realize then, before that, we give them a signal, which is this. Uh, that tells the dolphin. We point to the dolphin, tell them which one misbehaved, give them that signal. And that uh, tells them that they misbehaved and that we're going to take a time out and leave. Now, the dolphin knows that they did something wrong. And hopefully, when you come back, you, you take a time out for up to five minutes. We can't do that during a show, but approximately five minutes during a training session. We can come back out after that five minutes, uh, go back out, and hopefully the dolphin will do the behavior that they refused to do or that they did cr incorrectly before. Do you ever go in swimming with them? Uh, yeah, I sure do, uh, especially when it gets hot around here. Uh, I do swim with both dolphins once in a while. Uh, they're really friendly with me, mainly because they, they know me really well, plus I'm the one who feeds them every day. Um, but no, they're, they're really, really gentle in the water with you. Um, they allow you to rub them down. We also do what's known as a rescue ride once in a while with the dolphins, where you grab onto their dorsal fins and the dolphins will pull you around while you hang onto the dorsal fins. Call that a rescue ride. So yeah, yeah, I definitely do swim with them once in a while. What's the lifespan for a dolphin or sea lion? Um, well, f I, as far as the sea lions, I'm really not sure. On dolphins, I can tell you that it's 25 to 35 years, though, for, for dolphins. And sometimes they actually live longer than that. So that's, When do they stop training? When do they stop performing? Like a certain... um, Actually, up until the, when their lifespan's over with. Uh, dolphins will perform way into their 30s and with no problem at all. Uh, they will continue to pr perform every day with no problem. What would you do if one of the dolphins goes to the ceiling and gets sick? If they, if they get sick, what we do is we uh, do put them on medication. I also have a, but before I do that, I also have a veterinarian and my own curator located in Gulfport, Mississippi, whom I consult on what types of medication to get them. Uh, what, what I do is I talk to, uh, first of all, I talk to the curator and tell him what the problem is. And then I also talk to the vet, and she will actually come out here, uh, Dr. Lori Gage. And she will come out and actually look at the animals and kind of recommend what type of medication they should be put on. Thank you. This is Annie with Deborah from Silicon Kids. sea lion. One of the sea lions we have here, the other one's named Ryder. Jeff's pretty much the veteran here in Great America, though. i uh, tell you a couple of differences, though. We'll probably announce this during the show, but Jeff is a sea lion, a California sea lion to be exact. He's not a seal. A couple of ways to tell the difference between the two. You notice that Jeff has very well-developed front flippers, and he walks around on those pretty good. You can also see that he has earlobes on either side of his head. Now, you won't find either of those characteristics on a seal. That's really how we tell these two apart. We're going to have Jeff do a couple of behaviors here for you. First of all, 
to start with, which was what no, what's known as control behavior. What Jeff's going to have to do is hang on to this fish without swallowing it. Are you ready? Are you ready to do this? Okay. All right, hold on to it. Hold it. Hold it, Jeff. Hold it. Hold up. There you go. All right. Right on command, you'll swallow it. Uh, let's see, one other thing we could do, we can show you how well developed these front flippers are right up on stage here. I'm going to have Jeff demonstrate a California sea lion bow once he gets it together. Jeff, you ready? Jeff. Hey. Tail up, tail up, tail up. That a boy. There you go. Good job. Yay! Wasn't that good? That's about it. <laughs> and we're kind of out of fish. <laughs> Jeff, you ready to take off here, bud? Okay. Come on. Hi, everybody. Whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know we got a few more people out here than this. I said, hello, everybody. That's a lot better. Welcome to Great America's Saltwater Circus. My name's Doug Streepy. I'm going to be your announcer for the show. Your trainer's going to be Aaron Gallagher. We also have three star performers for you today. The first of which is going to be a California sea lion, Jeff. Come on down here, guy. We're going to get him right over to his seat on the other side. Once he does that, the first thing he'd like to do is he wants to show everybody exactly what he wants to see throughout this show. Lots of applause. Yeah. Jeff is a regular ham up here. He's also a pretty friendly ham, though. Jeff, you want to give five to Aaron there? A nice big handshake to start things off. There we are. Whoa, real nice. Pretty much a Jeff. Jeff, hey, hey, you don't kiss her on stage. You should be ashamed of yourself, really. Now behave up here, okay? Now, before he does any more behaviors, he also has a small prayer they'd like to perform right now. Jeff, you ready? Just bow our heads here. That's it. And God bless Mom, Dad. <laughs> and that guy who drives that fish truck every day. Amen. Okay, now it's time to get into some impressions. We're gonna start off with Jeff's impression of a walrus. Now, in order to do this behavior, this guy has to hang on to two of these luscious, juicy, scrumptious fish. <laughs> Yuck. Without swallowing them. We're talking real temptation here. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, our very old walrus. Real good, Jeff. Whoa. And those just disappeared down the garbage disposal. Now, Jeff also likes to poke fun at his other cousin, the seal. Now, there are a couple of big differences between seals and sea lions. Jeff here is a California sea lion. He has very well developed front flippers, gets around on those things pretty good. Now, you'll also note, as Vanna White, excuse me, Vanna White is showing you there, and you'll also notice that he has earlobes on either side of his head. Now, you'll find neither of those characteristics on a seal. That's how we tell the two apart. And we're going to have Jeff come down here and show us exactly what a seal looks like on land. And folks, they look kind of silly. They just kind of slink and grovel all over the place. Weird looking things. But we're also going to have Jeff demonstrate exactly how well developed those front flippers are. And what he's going to do is first of all balance his ball on top of his nose and then balance his entire weight on those front flippers. A front flipper handstand. Real good, Jeff, real good. Now, we still have some other things we, we're going to do here, but I'm kind of running out of ideas. Jeff, you want to kind of think on it yourself there? See if you can make up your mind what you'd like to do. That's, just give it some thought there. Yeah, yeah. What would you like to do, Jeff? Uh-huh. Whoa, whoa, Jeff. Hey, hey, Use some scope, all right? I think he wants to catch some rings, though. So we have four different colored rings. We're going to see if Jeff here can catch all four of those rings without dropping a single one. So we'll get him back up on his seat. Jeff, are you ready to go? You gonna catch all four? You sure? All right. Looks like he's ready to go. We'll start off the nice easy one. Aaron's getting warmed up. There's number one. Nice low one for a warm up. A little bit higher for number two. Two for two, looking good, Jeff. Number three, way up there one last time. End over end. You got it. Now we'll get those rings off, of Jeff. Now we'll send him over to the other side. Finally, get that ball on top of his nose. There goes the ball to the other side. And there goes Jeff, hopefully getting it on his nose. So far, so good, making his way back here. Keep it up there, Jeff, making a few waves. All the way back to the stage, but he's not done yet, folks. A nice full rollover. Whoa, still has the ball on his nose. And for a grand finale, a California sea lion bow. All right, real good, but 
it's time for this ham to head back to his private jacuzzi. Before he leaves, though, there is one last behavior he wants everybody out there to join in on, and that is going to be a nice big flipper wave. Goodbye. But how about one last round of applause for Jeff before he takes off here. He did a real good job out here. Well, now it's come time for the second portion of our show, and that's going to involve two Atlantic bottlenose dolphins. They go by the names of Squeaky and Liana. I'm going to tell you a little bit about these two. First of all, they were both caught out in the Gulf of Mexico near the Mississippi Sound. Squeaky is the male. He weighs approximately 350 pounds. Now, Liana's a little bit lighter. She weighs in the area of 340 to 345 pounds. Also, I'm sure a lot of people realize this, but dolphins, uh, they aren't fish. First of all, they do not have scales. Secondly, they also do not have gills. They are warm-blooded, and they are marine mammals, just like Jeff, our sea lion. They breathe air through a nostril located right on top of their head. Now, that's called the blowhole. All the sounds that you're going to hear today by these two animals are created by that blowhole because dolphins do not have vocal cords. All the sounds that they make come right off the top of their head. Now, a little bit about their outer anatomy. The fin on the dolphin's back, that is known as the dorsal fin, helps to stabilize the animals as they make their way through the water. Now, you'll also notice that they have fins on either side of their body. We call those pectoral fins or pecs. The dolphins use them as a steering mechanism. What they do is twist or turn these fins to change direction in the water. Now, you'll also notice on the tail end of the animal, we have what's known as the fluke. It's the paddle-like portion of the tail. It looks like our two dolphins, though, are just about ready to come out here. Squeaky and Liana, how about a warm welcome for both of them? Now, these two are into all kinds of sports and exercise. We're going to start out with some gymnastics here. Actually, it's going to be Liana on her own. It's going to be a behavior that will remind you a little bit of the ballet. It's called a pirouette. What it's going to be is a full twist right above the middle of our pool. Now, in order for Liana to perform this, she has to gain some momentum, momentum around the pool. Here she comes. Got it. Now it's time to send both dolphins down to the bottom of the pool. They're going to pop up in the middle, doubling your pleasure, a double dolphin backflip. Just to make sure, though, that these two are warmed up and ready to go, we're going to get them lined up again on the other side here. Aaron's going to make sure their flukes and tails are warmed up by having them take a jog all the way across the pool. They're going to suspend their entire weight on that fluke and tail area all the way down and all the way back. Looks like they're ready to go, and they're off. All right. Real good. Well, we also have some track and field events. We're going to start that off with a double hurdle jump. But in order to do this, we need some help. I need an adult volunteer or somebody really strong to hold on to the rope for us. So we're looking around for an adult, really strong volunteer to help us out. Keep those hands up there. We need a hand that somebody's really, oh, this guy's willing right on the side here. Sir, you want to come down here? That's it. Just make your way right up towards the front of the pool near the middle here. That's fine. Just step right across the, the fence there. That's it. Now, before we do this, first of all, what's your name? I'm, I'm sorry. Dale. Dale. Okay, we got it. <laughs> Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> all right, Dale, what we're going to do is we're going to have Squeaky bring this rope over to you, okay? Dale, don't even think about those 104 razor-sharp teeth he has. <laughs> oh, Dale, I'm just kidding, man. He's only got 102. All right, now once he brings it over there, just take it right off his rostrum. And he's moving right over that way. There we are. Now, Dale, the next thing you want to do is turn around and go up about four rows right behind you. Just shove those people out of the way, Dale. You're part of the show. You can do this now, okay? About four rows up there so we can get this nice and taut across the pool. Uh, that might be enough. You're going to want to pull back on it a little bit more. There we are. Oh, Dale, whoa, almost forgot. You are covered by insurance, aren't you? <laughs> You're laughing. The reason I asked, Dale, is sometimes our dolphins get a little lazy. Instead of going over the rope, <laughs> They land on top of it, giving you a nice bird's eye view of the audience here, Dale, while you're traveling at 70 miles per hour. <laughs> but Dale, don't worry. Hey, you will not get wet. That pool wall is going to stop you first. All right, looks like our dolphins are ready. Hang on tight, Dale. Here they are. Real nice. Well, that was pretty good. Would you folks like to see that one more time, huh? Yeah. 
great, great, great. Come back to our next show, okay? No, we're gonna do it again. Around the bun they go, up, bend over. Okay, Dale, you can bring that right on back down here. Just give the rope a nice toss in the pool, we'll take it from there. And also, how about a hand for our volunteer, Dale? Well, we're going to get right back in action. We're going to do that with some surfing. Now, you'll notice there aren't a lot of big waves out here to surf on. That is no problem at all for our two dolphins. As you're going to find out, they make enough waves on their own. What Aaron is going to do is give that modified surfboard a toss to the other side of the pool, have the dolphins go over that way, get on top of it, and hang some chin all the way back across the pool. Across the USA. Let's go, guys. Then everybody be One more time right back to Aaron. That. We're gonna let them take one last little breather here. While they do that, what I want to do right now is I would like to find a small, really brave, courageous volunteer to come up here and help us out. I need a small one though, somebody willing to do anything for us, okay? You also have to be small enough to be swallowed whole. <laughs> Looking around for those small, really brave, courageous volunteers. That's it. Find out his name, where he's from, and also his next of kin. That's good. He's still smiling. Hasn't heard a single word I've said. Okay, come right over here. Now, first of all, what is your name? Jeff. Jeff, where are you from? America. Uh, America. That's getting right down to brass tacks there. How about a hand for America? Yeah! All right, Jeff. Jeff, you know what you volunteered to do for us today? I didn't think so. Jeff, it's a real sad story. Erin here, she dropped her favorite whistle in the pool. Jeff went all the way to the bottom. What we need you to do, okay? You're just going to dive down to the bottom, grab that whistle for her, and bring it right back up, okay? Okay. Okay. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Before you take the big plunge, Jeff, I thought you might be worried about holding your breath long enough down there. That's no problem. Aaron has these two dolphins trained. They will hold you down on the bottom until you find that whistle. Okay, Jeff? <laughs> Okay, we're gonna have fun with you, Jeff. No, Jeff, we're not gonna have you do that. What we would like you to do, though, we'd like you to pet a dolphin. How would you like to do that? You wanna pet a dolphin? Okay, hang on a second. Just stand right there with me. Now, this is known as dry docking, folks. What Aaron is gonna do is bring, bring Squeaky right up on stage here. Shows a lot of trust between the trainer and their dolphins. Come on up this way. Jeff, stand right on this white mat, okay? Give him a nice rub down right on the side there. Oh, yeah. Best rub down he's had all day. Okay, come on back this way, Jeff. Go right over here near Erin, and she's going to show you how we feed these dolphins a fish. There's a special way to feeding our dolphins. First of all, Jeff, you want to hold it right in your hand and cover up the eyes of this fish, okay? Cover those eyes up real good. We don't want this fish to know what's going to happen next, all right? Okay. Oh, Jeff, don't squeeze so hard. Whoa, man, that is gross, Jeff, okay? Yeah, next thing you want to do is just wipe that tail off real good. Get all that stuff off there. Ooh, yeah, you got that junk on your hands now. Just wipe that off on your pants. Yeah, mom will never know. That's good, Jeff. Now, this is the most important part of this behavior, okay? You're going to take that nice clean tail that cleaned off really good, just the tip, put it right between your teeth, hold it over the edge of the pool, and drop it right into Liana's mouth, okay? We'll get her back in the pool in a second here. Just put it right between your teeth, Jeff. Just the tip of that tail. Jeff's psyching himself up for this right now. All right, Jeff, walk up right near the edge here. And just drop it right into Aaron's mouth. What a rip. All right. Good job, Jeff. Well, Jeff, you know, that was great, but I hate to tell you, not too many volunteers will do that, you know? But I have one last thing to give you before you go. For being a great volunteer, your very own fuzzy dolphin. Thank you very much. Take away right across. Big hand for Jeff, our great volunteer. Now we're going to get right back in action, folks. We're going to do that at the ball jump. You notice we have a white ball suspended approximately 13 feet above the water. We're going to have Squeaky go up there and touch that ball, utilizing his rostrum. Now they'll be traveling at speeds of about 8 to 10 miles per hour for this behavior. Focus your attention up here, ladies and gentlemen. Got it. Well, we still have some more jumps to do. This time it's going to be a double high jump. Both animals coming up at the top of this tower to take fish out of Aaron's left and right hand. 
Now, in order to do this behavior, they will be using what we call echolocation sonar. What they do is they bounce sound waves off the sides of the pool. These sound waves are then returned to the dolphin's lower jaw. That leads to receptors that go to the brain, giving these animals an idea of the depth of the pool, and they can also detect density this way. This will also be way over 600 pounds coming up here at the same time. To take those fish out of our hands. Looks like our dolphins are ready. They're up there. Well, hey, if you like that jump, man, you are going to love this next one. Not her. She's going to take another one of those unclean, unscaled, ugly fish. She's going to have Leanna come up and take it right from between for two outstretched lips. Hey, 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 don't laugh at this. If you did this six times a day, you would have outstretched lips too. By the way, we also need absolute silence on this behavior. A few days ago, Erin had one of those things in her mouth. Leanna's almost up there ready to get it. Some lady goes berserk out in the audience, screams really loud. Scared her so bad, man. Erin swallowed one of those babies. So fish lips, are you ready? Thought so. Okay, Leanna's just about set to go. She's got the signal on her way around. Kids, by the way, don't try this at home. All right, looks like Leanna's ready. She's up there. Got it. How about a big hand for a soap Erin? Yeah. are coming down near the end of the show here, but don't go yet. First of all, the dolphins want to show you exactly what portion of the show this is. It's known to them as the tail end, of course. But we also need some more audience participation. I need everybody out there to get your right hand up in the air. Everybody! Hey, hey, that's great, that's great. Now get your left hand up there too. Fantastic! Now give me all your money. Now just raise your right hand up in the air. Wave a wide or two dolphins and wave right back at you as they make their way around the pool. Don't be shy, don't be embarrassed. And then we're going to have these two show off a little bit more. And they're going to do that with one last big series of bows around the pool. So you don't forget them, Squeaky and Liana. And also, don't forget Jeff, our California sea lion. By the way, you've been a great patient audience for us today. I hope you enjoyed the show. And also, have a great day here at Great America. Thank you very much. Well, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope to see you next time here on Silicon Kids. I'm Lester Quibbles, and I'm here to quibble with you about sports. Sports, what a dumb thing. Do you play sports? You're dumb. I'm sorry. It's a dumb thing to play sports, and I'll tell you why. Sports cause your heart to beat very rapidly, cause you to breathe hard, cause you to feel pain. That is fairly stupid, don't you think? And I'm telling you why. It's stupid because you don't have to do it. No, you don't have to play sports. You can lie around all day. You can get fat. You can eat. You can have a good time. Why play sports? Now, if there's anything more ridiculous than sports in general, it's professional sports. What could be more stupid? It causes your father to get in trouble with your mother on New Year's Day because he's always sitting around and he's watching the television. Why should he watch sports on TV? might as well watch commercials. It's stupid. There's nothing you can do. You can sit there and you can yell. They can't hear you. Why do it? It's dumb. So listen, do not play sports. Do not get involved with sports. You want to go to high school? You want to play basketball? You want to play soccer? You want to get hurt? What are you, some kind of schmuck? Why do you want to do that? 
It's stupid. Don't do it. I'm telling you, sports are ridiculous. Never, never, never play sports. And why? I'm telling you why. It's dumb. And if this has not been enough for you, that's the quibble for today. I don't want to talk about it. Oh, let's sing a song we can all sing along I'd like to come along with you I'd like to belong to a beautiful song And be a part of something we all can do Let me tell you the story of a man on a hill How he had a flock of sheep and he knew them very well He would open the gate and call them by name Knew them everyone and loved them all the same mm -hmm. Now the man went first, the sheep came last The man shut the gate when the sheep went past He led them through mountains, meadows and plains Down the river valley to bring them home again now homeward, homeward, helpful as you be The gates left open and the sheep run free And children, children, look around and see What would you do if you were me? Now my sheep come from so many places So many lives and so many races So many colors and so many faces We need something we all can do Let's sing a song we can all sing along I'd like to come along with you I'd like to belong to a beautiful song Be a part of something we all can do Let's sing a song we can all sing along I'd like to come along with you to belong to a beautiful song and be a part of something we all can do. I say, let's sing a song, oh, sing a song. I'd like to come along with you. Hi, Cocky Boo. Hi, Elwood. Long time no see. Yeah. What you been doing? Oh, uh, I was talking to one of my friends, and guess, guess what? What? Guess what? Uh, he made the baseball team. No. Uh, 
He had lemonade for dinner. No. Uh, he's not happy? He's not happy, no, he isn't happy at all. Oh, what happened? His mom and dad, they've been fighting a lot, and they're gonna get a divorce. His mom and dad are going to get a divorce? Yeah, they're not gonna be married anymore, no siree. What, does he feel it's his fault? Well, I told him, I asked Dr. C, and Dr. C said, it's not the children's fault. It's not the children's fault, yeah. we know that, yeah. Yeah, and I told him, I told him, it's not your fault. That's what I told him. Well, let's look at all the kids now, right now. Kids, if your mom and your dad are having a fight or getting a divorce, well, it's all you gotta do is remember, it's not your fault, that, right, Elwood? That's right, it's not the children's fault. That's Parents it. can do other things besides get divorced. They can do other things? Yeah, I like, mean, if they're angry at the children, they can punish the children or send them to bed, or but they don't have to get a divorce. Or they can tell them, don't do that anymore, and then the children can be good helpers. Well, okay, but like, what, what if your mom and dad get divorced, and you see your mom a few days a week, and your dad a few days a week, and when you get there, one of them starts saying bad things about the other one. I mean, it's kind of weird, isn't it? That, put you in the middle and make you hear all that stuff? Oh yeah, that is bad. You should not get caught in the middle. So Never. What, do you, what, what do you say to your mom and dad if you, one of them is saying bad things about the other? How do you let them know that you love them and, and you don't want to hear bad things? You just tell them, you say, don't tell me those things. Tell mom or tell dad, but don't tell me because I don't want to be caught in the middle. We ought to make up a song about that when Doug comes by later. Don't get caught in the middle. Don't get caught in the middle. Hi diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle. No one got caught in the middle. Yeah, that sounds good, I like that. Hi diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle. My dad jumped over the moon. My mother ran away with the spoon. And don't get caught in the middle. And don't get caught in the middle. And the cat will come and play the fiddle. Yeah, so don't get caught in the middle because that's the worst place to be. I know yeah. a place worse than that. What's that? It's to be caught in the middle and nobody be there with you to give you support. Oh, yeah. So you can either talk to somebody if you have a problem. Right. You, Don't you, push it down and make it worry about it. Yeah, you can talk to your mom or your dad. I'll bet you can talk to your teacher in school. <laughs> your teacher or your counselor. Lots of people to talk to. How about talking to grandma or grandpa? Grandma, grandpa, your minister, your rabbi, all kinds of people to talk to. Yeah, so Maybe don't... an uncle or an aunt? Yeah, an uncle, an aunt, a friend. But a not friend. a stranger, not a stranger. No, we don't talk to strangers. We well, can talk to a friend's parents, though. They can help sometimes, too. Like when you go see your friend and tell your mom and dad, I'm not gossiping out of home, but I've got a problem, and what can I do? You got to talk to somebody. Okay, so what's the rule? Don't talk to somebody. Talk to somebody. Don't get caught in the middle. You hear that, kids? Don't get caught in the middle. Hi diddle diddle, don't get caught in the middle. And let's change the subject and let's go hear some music, okay? Yeah, this was getting pretty serious. Serious, let's be silly. Music, right now. Right.
Hey, it's Cocky Boo again. <laughs> that means the history lesson. We're studying about American history. Now, we had a president once, the only president to ever come from New Hampshire. And his name was Franklin Pierce. Franklin Pierce was a president from New Hampshire. And when he left the White House, after he finished being president, his wife died. And he got very sad. You know what he did? He met the poet Nathaniel Hawthorne, and he went to Europe and recited poetry. But he didn't want to leave any memories, so he destroyed all his papers. And today, in the history of the National Archives, all of President Franklin Pierce's papers can be found in one shoebox. Would you believe it? He left us a shoebox full of papers. What a nice guy he was. Many, many men, but I found not one who had the eyes to see that a new age approaches, the old ways are done, and I stand asking every man to see. We stand.
shy when it comes to saying hi they feel funny deep inside and they turn their heads away they think no one wants to meet them and nobody really needs them so when you go up to greet them they turn their heads away you gotta stand up tall gather up a smile take a big breath Look them in the eye and say hi. So take it from your dog or cat. They've got their lows down pat. Meow, meow, meow. Woo, woo. Yeah, yeah. They don't turn their heads away. your turn for feeling shy you might want to run and hide <laughs> My name's Elwood. And I'm Jerry. We're, We're tired, tired of violence on TV. Nakakibu. With Magic Mouse. Bring peaceful stories to your house. Oh, when we watch peace, we know we could treat friends and family really good. Watch Magic Mouse. And Kakibu. And treat your family better, too. I'd rather be me than watch TV. I think I'll go and have a tree. I'd rather be me, I'd rather be free. And with life and simplicity. I'll go out and find some wood and carve it into something good. I'll find a rock and beat the ground and listen to its beautiful sound. Cause I'd rather be me than watch TV. I think I'll go and have a tree. I'd rather be me, I'd rather be free. And with life and simplicity. I'll find some water and some dirt and draw some on my perch. When my mama catches me, I'll run right out and hug a tree. Just I'd rather be me than watch TV. I think I'll go and hug a tree. I'd rather be me, I'd rather be free. And it's like in simplicity. I'll find a bug and watch it crawl, climbing slowly up the wall. I'll find some things and I'll make a house and have some tea with magic in the mouth. Cause I'd rather be me than watch TV. I think I'll go and hug a tree. I'd rather be me, I'd rather be free. And it's like in I'd rather be me than watch TV. I think I'll go and hug a tree. I'd rather be me. I'd rather be free. And it's like in simplicity.